going on everyone um so i want to dig into a few things today on this 3d printed gun uh issue that we are all uh dredging up and it's uh inflaming a lot of misinformation and i don't think we're doing ourselves a good service about um not finding out what this issue really is uh it's not about um just our second amendment rights or guns in particular i think this is more of an infringement on what we are able to do with our knowledge and spreading our ideas and our file sharing and to whom actually and what uh the issue is and why um this case is being blocked and held up um it's a little tricky i had to do some digging but uh if you bear with me a little bit i'm i'm hoping i uh found a few things that might bring to light uh, the direction of this case and what may or may not happen. So a lot of us know this uh, 3D printed gun, this Liberator. Um, Defense Distributed uh, came out with this design and posted it back in 2013. Just free out there for anybody to download the file and do with what, what they can. The gun itself... Um, I don't think anybody's drooling over it. I think just the nostalgia of just printing out your gun uh, has just taken everybody to that next level of excitement because in the industry, this is where we could possibly go. The plastic gun isn't anything new. We've had plastic guns for um, quite some time now. Anybody who's heard of Polymer 80, uh, this, is, this is just a plastic frame. You don't need to... Um, print this this is already injection molded or sometimes these things are milled out you know so we don't need the technology it's just to be able to print it this is stuff that you know with ar-15 receivers you know this is aluminum you know but this you know we have uh, molded plastic guns out there already so it's not an issue of uh, whether just because the gun is plastic you could buy these things you don't need background checks and um, there's nothing wrong with that we're allowed to build our own guns so there's nothing there's nothing uh, preventing us from buying non-firearms and turning them into firearms. And there's nothing preventing us from going to Home Depot to make, you know, slam fire shotguns or, you know, when we made zip guns, you know, decades ago. There's YouTube channels of uh, some little YouTube stars completely redesigning and remaking new guns that actually function and fire. Now, they're not out of plastic but trying to stop people from developing and coming up and engineering new designs for guns, um, that's that's not good. That's not good. You shouldn't be told what you can and can't build or aspire to create. Um, so that's, that's the first issue with this kind of stuff. The gun is just very crude. It is what it is. It's not very concealable. It's a single shot, um, but it is plastic and it does fire and function as plastic now a lot of people are concerned about oh well it can't get past metal detectors and you know the firing pin metal bullet itself metal the grip that is you know uh attached to this gun is going to be probably metal screwing it in place is probably going to be metal so the concern about uh metal detectors or anything like that uh not being able to trace this gun uh, I just don't think it's, I don't think it's an issue. It's not going to be an issue. Um, the airports, you know, your schools, your sports stadiums, they're all going to be fine. Whatever's in place right now, preventing people from bringing in fucking mail clippers or uh, a small casing in your luggage bag when it gets picked up at an airport, it's going to be fine. It's going to work the same. Uh, this already kind of has been addressed and I'll just jump to... Let's see here. Uh, well, I'll just, I'll just, I'll just show you this. So Obama signed a bill to extend the ban on plastic guns. Uh, this uh, was okay. I'll just read it. President Obama on Monday signed a bill that extends the ban on plastic firearms for another ten years. The president signed the Undetectable Fire Act, Firearms Act extension last night. So this was something that was put in to place by Reagan. And what it is basically saying is if 
uh, a plastic gun or any gun has to have a certain amount of metal in it. Uh, hence the untraceable part or undetectable part. And what it has been, it's been uh, extended through the years. So this recent extension through President Obama put another 10 years on this. And this was back in 2013. So through 2023, until this is readdressed or potentially re-extended, uh, these guns legally have to have a certain amount of metal in them. So you're not legally getting around metal detectors with your 3D printed gun, just like you're not legally bringing a gun through the metal detectors Anyways, so all the hyperbole and the outrage over it's going to be undetected. Well, then that would mean a criminal is going to do it. So if you're trying to tell a criminal not to do something that is a crime, good luck with that. Um, so, yeah, just had covered all sorts of shit. The bill allows manufacture, import, selling, shipment, delivery, possession, transport, or reception of any firearm that is not detectable by walkthrough metal detectors or has major components that do not generate an accurate image by an airport x-ray machine. So this has already been covered. All you pearl clutchers, shut the fuck up. Okay, so moving on. Uh, covered the gun itself. Um, I'll just, I'll get back into just really what the gun is, I guess. Liberator, a feasible 3D printed single shot handgun. The first such printable firearm design made widely available came online. The open source firm Defense Distributed designed the gun and released the plans on the internet May 16th, 2013. So it's been a while. This has been an ongoing case. It's been appealed and, you know, all sorts of shit. The plans were downloaded over 100,000 times already in the two days before the United States Department of State demanded that the Defense Distributor retract the plans. Okay, so it's already out there. You can't do anything about it, you know. Plans for the gun uh, remain hosted across the internet and are available at file sharing websites like Pirate Bay and GitHub, blah, blah, blah. On July 19, 2018, the United States Department of Justice reached a settlement with Defense Distributed, allowing the sale and of the, uh, the plans for 3D printed firearms online, beginning August 1st, 2018. We'll get to the, the hold up on that again. The president, Donald Trump, tweeted a cryptic message in appearance reference to the decision to allow the online publication of the Liberator's files. I'm looking into the 3D plastic guns being sold to the public, already spoke to the NRA, doesn't seem to make much sense. Very vague. What doesn't mean, what doesn't make much sense? That it's being held up, that he doesn't think the people should have 3D printed guns. It's just another fucking Trump tweet. He's a fucking idiot. Okay, so... Getting into why the State Department jumped in and told them to uh, take it down. Uh, getting into this Harvard Law Review. Um, coming down this paragraph right here. On May 8th, 2013, Defense Distributed received a letter from the State Department alleging that under the Arms Export Control Act, we'll get to that, the CAD files posted by the organization could not be exported uh, abroad in the form of online publication without the government pre-approval. Defense Distributed removed these files, but they remain freely accessible through third-party sites such as the Pirate Bay. After, le uh, after lengthy waits for uh, approval to post, further, to post further files, Defense Distributed, together with the Second Amendment Foundation, filed suit in the United States District Court of the Western District of Texas. The plaintiffs alleged that the State Department's interpretation of the AECA created an unconstitutional prior restraint on speech and sought preliminary injunction in joining, um, in joining the enforcement of any uh, pre-publication approval requirements. So I guess what it's saying, of course, I'm not a lawyer, shouldn't have to explain this, that um, they're saying that it's a First Amendment restriction having to get pre-approval to post um, data online. That's, you know, I haven't read the court files. I've, this is just something that I've just, I've been trying to jump through and find some shit. So... The purpose of it was because the Arms Export Control Act had jumped in, okay? Well, we go over and we look up what Arms Export Control Act. The Arms Export Control Act of 1976, enacted June 30th, 1976, codified 22 U.S.C. Chapter 39, gives the President of the United States the authority to control and import and, ex or the import and export a defense articles and defense services. We'll get to that. The H.R. 13680 legislation was passed by the 94th Congressional Session and enacted into law by the 30th President of the United States, Gerald Ford, June 30th, 1976. The Act of Congress requires international governments receiving weapons from the United States to use the armaments for legitimate self-defense. 
Okay, so the Act of Congress requires international governments, okay, so they're pertaining to international governments receiving these weapons, okay, so they're categorizing that data as weapons already from the United States. This isn't the United States, this is a private individual uh, to use these armaments for legal, uh, legitimate self defense. Okay, uh, consideration is given as to whether exports would contribute to an arms race, aid, development, weapons of mass destruction, support international terrorism, increase the possibility of an outbreak or uh, escalation of conflict, or prejudice the development of bilateral or multilateral arms control, the non-profit agreements, or other arrangements. Fuck. The act also places certain restrictions on Americans' arms traders. Okay, so that's where we start getting into the individuals and manufacturers prohibiting them from the sale of certain sensitive technologies to certain parties and requiring thorough documentations of such trade to trusted parties. That is that clause that says if you're a private individual and you come up with something, um, certain technologies, we'll get into that, uh, to certain parties requiring thorough documentation to such trade and uh, trusted parties. When the president is aware of the possibility of violations of the AECA, the law requires the report to Congress on the potential violations. I've heard a lot about, we shouldn't be able to print guns. This is an ITAR issue. Apparently this is an Arms Export Control Act issue. I'll bring up the uh, arms trafficking here in a minute and kind of what the, the differences are. So did, did the president go to Congress and report that this is an issue during that, during that time? I don't know, that's something we can all dig in or someone post it in the comments. U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement conducts an industry outreach program called the Project Shield America to prevent foreign adversaries, terrorists, and criminal networks from obtaining U.S. munitions and strategic technologies. There's another issue. So ICE here conducts an industry outreach program called the Project Shield America to prevent foreign adversaries, terrorists, criminal networks from obtaining munitions of strategic technologies. What is strategic te uh, technology? I'm sure they probably get into that, but I'm sure most of us are fucking very absolutely familiar with uh, Operation Fast and Furious. What happened there? What happened there? This is exactly what happened. We fucking got all sorts of our technology and weapons into foreign terrorists and adversaries when we arm fucking, you know, little munition groups or militia groups that take down uh, you know, foreign regimes, okay, we're handing our technologies over to these fucks, and criminal networks, Pfft, the drug cartels, what happened there? People died from that. So, good call on making laws that you don't fucking, uh, you know, follow yourself. So, the application of these Arm Export Control Acts, uh, I guess we're just looking for a few instances. Um, in the 1990s, after a report from RSA Data Security Incorporated, who are licensing dispute with regard to the use of the RSA algorithm in the PGP it means fucking nothing to me. The Customs Service studied the criminal investigation Philip Zimmerman for allegedly violating the Arms Export Control Act. The U.S. government had long regarded cryptography software as ammunition and thus subject to an arms trafficking export controls. At the time, the boundary between permitted low strength uh, cryptography and impermissible high strength cryptography placed the PGP well on the too strong side or the true strong to export side. This boundary has since been relaxed. The investigation lasted three years, but was finally dropped uh, without filing charges. Okay. So back in the nineties, they were already kind of going after people for some of this cryptography shit. Uh, another instance, uh, 2005 government accounting office, uh, did a study on arms export since nine 11. This is probably nothing. The study noted that the system itself had not been changed since nine 11, since the system was already designed to counter such threats. The study did report that the processing time for arms uh, cases increased starting in 2013. So that was a big fucking nothing burger. How about, okay. In 2006, Boeing was fined 15 million for unlicensed foreign sales involving in gyroscopic microchip or gyro chip with military applications. Okay, so Boeing was fined $15 million of their own fucking technology income. This is revenue that they brought from their technologies. Fined $15 million because they violated this fucking act. Okay, that private company sold a microchip driver chip to mil with uh, just for that had military applications. Now, did they have a contract with the military that said this is now considered a military application? You cannot sell this info? Or is the government just stepping in and saying, Military could use that because it has applications. Okay, I guess anybody can dig into that more. 
March 2007, ITT Corporation was fined uh, for criminal violation of the act. The fines resulted in ITT's outsourcing program in which they transferred night vision goggles and classified information about countermeasures against laser weapons, including light interference filters, to engineer in Singapore. The People's Republic of China and the United Kingdom, they were fined $100 million. $100 million. I'm assuming it's their, manuf yeah, worldwide. So they are worldwide manufacturing company based in White Plains, New York. The company produces specifically uh, specialty components for aerospace, transportation, energy, and industrial markets. So this is a worldwide global uh, uh, company. And they were fined $100 million because they didn't get approval first for night vision goggles. What is... Classified information, okay? Countermeasures, so $100 million. Government's gonna swoop in and take that. Uh, let's see here. Okay, here, here's probably a good one, the violation of your good cause or shit. In 2009, Congress, uh, Congressman Dennis Kuhn, fuck out of here, sent a notice to Secretary of State Dr. Condoleezza Rice that Israel's actions in Gaza since uh, December uh, 27, 2008 may constitute a violation of the requirements of the AECA. The AECA requires that each nation that receives a shipment of arms, this is just data right now, so in this instance is actual arms, from the United States must certify that the weapons are used for uh, internal security and legitimate self-defense and that their use does not lead to an escalation of conflict. However, the AECA does not define internal security or legitimate self-defense. So, okay, so there's no definition to those two things that they laid out saying it must have these guidelines or regulations. There's no definitions of them, apparently. Uh, Kukniak, sure, said that Israel's actions in Gaza killed nearly 600 and injured over 200 or 2,500, including innocent civilians and children in their residential areas and civilian institutions like schools. Fucking same dude. God, said that the, uh, this may have violated the AECA because they don't uh, further Israel's internal security or legitimate self-defense, but increase the possibility of an outbreak or escalation of conflict. Okay, so they're basically saying because they violated... They violated legitimate self-defense or internal security, which I guess can't be defined. Good luck following those guidelines, moving the fucking goalposts whenever they can. The charges were denied by the IDF and no action has been taken under the act. So they can't even fucking, so because they can't define that guideline you're supposed to stay within, that's probably why they can't convict them for any bullshit. So it looks like our last little one, uh, it's, sorry, it's taking a minute. Uh, July 2009, John Reese Roth, a former uh, University of Tennessee professor, was convicted for violating the AECA and sentenced to 40 months in prison. Roth had a United States Air Force contract to develop plasma technology to reduce drag on airplanes wings. One application was an un unmanned air vehicle, drones. Roth was accused of violating the law by sharing technology, not classified data, with Chinese and Iranian graduate students and having technical data on his laptop during the trip to China. So... This one, he has a contract, okay? He had a contract, so whatever was in that contract saying, whatever you're finding, whatever you're developing, probably says, do not share with anybody. Uh, violating by sharing technical data with fucking students, having technical data on his laptop. That's all within that file, whatever, whatever their uh, contract said. Roth and others said that the AECA and applied uh, as applied in this case would violate academic freedom and force prof professors to discriminate against students on the basis of nationality. So that's their little technical fucking get out was you can't force me to say I can't share it with foreign people because how am I supposed to determine who the fuck is foreign? There's a lot of bullshit in this shit. Okay, that was very lengthy. That was very uh, long. Um, so sorry. So just I want as I'm moving on, scrolling back to the top right here. Control of the import and export of defense articles and defense services. What are defense articles? So uh, legal information institute. Defense articles. Defense articles mean any item or technical data designed in section 121.1 of this subchapter. The policy described in section 120.3 is applicable to designations and additional items. This term includes technical data recorded or stored in any physical form, models, mockups, or other items that reveal technical data directly relating to the items designated in 121.1 of the subject. It also includes forgings, castings, and other unfinished products such as extrusions and machine bodies that have reached stage of manufacturing where they are clearly identifiable by mechanical properties, material uh, composition, geometry, and function in defense articles. It does not include base marketing information on function or purpose of general system descriptions. 
Okay, so that's defining what is uh, what is protected or what is defined under defense articles when that uh, AECA is saying, hey, if you want to share certain things, come to us first, let us pre-approve it. So this is what's defining uh, what, uh, what is all that shit. Getting back to our defense services, defense services, the furnishing of assistance to foreign persons, whether United States or abroad, in the design, development, engineering, manufacturing, production, assembly, testing, repair, maintenance, modification, operation, demilitarization, destruction, possession, uh, processing, or use of defense articles. So this is the furnishing of assistance. This is helping people, whether abroad in foreign nations or actually here in the United States, um, that might have nefarious uh, alternatives or meanings. You know, I think it all just gets back to let the United States know first before you share your data that. So what this really sounds like to me is obviously we have a national defense uh, interest, uh, making sure that we stay on top of our competitors, regardless if it's for self-defense or self-preservation or just as an industry, you know, we're coming up and we're developing all sorts of technologies that benefit our economy, that benefit uh, medicine and energy, if we're going to define all of these things and we're going to put a cap on them until it's approved that is, and especially when it's just file sharing, that's saying you do not have free speech. That is saying you fall in this category of speech until you are approved to wander outside of that margin. Uh, so this is saying who you can inside or outside, how you can, what you can. Okay. So how I think this differs between the ITAR regulations, International Traffic and Arms Regulations. International Traffic and Arms Regulations, I, don't, I won't get into the whole thing, is the United States regulatory regime to restrict and control the export of defense and military related technologies and safeguards. So I think that's where the definition differs slightly, is that this is already claiming military related technologies and safeguards. Firearms aren't a military protected anything okay the military doesn't own your intellectual property stuff that you haven't come up with stuff that you're just now developing they don't own this now if they're going to try to get around and say that oh this could have a military application well anything can have a military application the fucking boots i'm wearing could be a military application the hat you know just because the military utilizes it and purchases contracts for these things that have military applications they don't get to just blanket all of your intellectual data, your production, they don't get to cover all that and say it's ours now because it has an application. I, of course, could fucking very well be wrong. Someone chime in and do so. Help me, help me spread the shit. So defense-related articles and services of the United States munitions list, we'll get into that because that covers what they are trying to cover. Firearms, um, up-armored vehicles, defense body armor. I have, I have that list here. Uh, covered under the regulations which implement provisions of the Arms Export Control Act and are described in Title 22 Foreign Relations, Chapter 1, Department of the State, Subchapter M of the Code of Federal Regulations, Department of the State, uh, Directorate of Defense Trade Controls, interprets and enforces ITAR. Okay, so if we were to get into defense of defense or uh, decor uh, de <laughs> decorate of defense trade controls, fuck me. The Bureau, the Bureau of Political Military Affairs Directorate of Defense Trade Controls is the organization within the U.S. Department of State responsible for enforcing the international traffic and arms regulations in accordance to, in accordance with 22.USC, fuck, all these numbers, of the Arms Export Control Act, DDTC is charged with controlling the export and temporary import of defense articles and defense services covered by the United States munition, uh, Munitions List. DDTC ensures that the, United, uh, the U.S. defense trade supports the national security and foreign policy interests of the United States, seeking to deny adversaries the United States access to U.S. defense technology while ensuring inter, uh, inter pro, pro, fuck me among allies in coalition. So again, this this agency is here to uh, to protect United States defense technology. This particular issue with this 3D gun is not a United States defense technology. They didn't patent this, they didn't think it, they didn't 
they didn't birth it through their idea and this means of 3d printing so it sounds like a lot of what's going on here is the u.s saying hey you did not come to me to spread this idea because it has we have a vested, a vested interest to protect ourselves to make sure it's not sold to china and china mass produces whatever and then outbeats us i completely understand that it's a self-preservation thing but there's a huge issue with denying people their right uh to speech to share data just because of the precautionary measures you want to take um, to defend uh, our interest or our position at the top. It's not, it's not, it's not right to hold us down just to make sure that we stay on top. I don't think, and and, it, and it's scary, you know. It it we shouldn't be we shouldn't be held down for our ideas until it's pre-approved. Okay, that's not the way our freedom of speech works. Getting back to the United States munitions list. So obviously firearms, guns, armaments, ammunition, uh, ammunition launch export or launch vehicles, explosive surface, ground vehicles, aircraft, military training equipment. There's a process which ex uh, intends to establish and improve the capabilities of uh, military personnel in their respective roles. It begins with recruit training processes, education, traffic. So look at this has zero force application. This is just education and training. So you come up with a new style of push up or something. A new tactic on ground warfare. You can't share this kind of stuff, apparently, without getting approval. Nuclear technology, nuclear weapons. Although that is on the high end of scary if we were last in that kind of uh, relative field, I still don't think we should be restric restricted in our rights. Because I'll tell you what, if we somehow come up with some kind of um, uh, low-cost energy effective way of powering our cities and homes this is a nuclear technology it already could be a nuclear weapon i'm i'm fucking not even close to smart enough to know how but we know this is capable that's how we stumbled across this kind of stuff so if we were to turn around and make uh, efficient uh energy by means of nuclear i don't know technology it's sounding like that's just going to get regulated you have to get approval before you launch that free information so you can make it out of your pine saw and you're covered i don't know whatever but that's that's just what it gets down to a lot of bullshit a lot of being told what you can and can't do united states munitions list more of this fucking bs gets more into you know barrel cylinders blah blah blah. what else we got here violations yeah without first obtaining the requirement license or written approval from the director of defense trades controls and it is unlawful Okay, to export or attempt to export from the United States any defense article or technical data or furnish or attempt to furnish any defense service for which license or written approval is required by the subchapter. There it is. Okay, so it's illegal for you to put everything into a PDF form or put everything into a CAD file and publish it without having that new technology unknown by our government because they want to look through it first and give you the thumbs up, you're okay, or let us have it first um okay and that's all i've got that's that's kind of what i've all dug into again i just wanted to post this and get it out there that i see a lot of people saying oh this is a gun rights we should be able to uh we should be able to print guns at home i'm not manufacturing this is just for me i don't see an issue with it yes you're correct you're correct we're allowed to build these of course as long as you're not a felon as long as you're legally able to build your firearms you're allowed to take what's what what once was a hunk of metal and Although this is crude too, I got to polish it up a little bit. You're allowed to make your own firearms. There's nothing wrong with that. Again, we've been able to do this for a long time. This is just simple ingenuity and creativity. You go to Home Depot, three quarter inch pipe, one inch pipe, shotgun shell fits in the three quarter inch pipe. You put a bolt on it and you have a slam fire shotgun. That's that's how that is, okay? Uh, you know, those zip guns, anything crude of the materials you have in your garage, you can put some shit together and make your own firearms. We've got laws that kind of require and restrict people from doing certain things. I don't agree with it, but it is what it is. Plastic guns have been around for a long time. So it's not an issue about printing these things. It's already being done. You don't need a license to this. This shit is shipped to my house. I haven't made this because this is, this is the version one of polymer 80 and it's shit. Sorry, Lauren. Love you. You know, it's true. Anyways. So that's just what I wanted to cover. Um, I hope you guys, uh, hope that brought a little bit of light to some people. Uh, if you're fairly new to firearms, this is a big issue in our uh, gun industry and in our culture. If you are in the culture and you understand what's going on, please help share this, share this video, share this information. 
that this has to do a lot with how we share our information. And, and if you're not into guns and if you're not into um, that we should be able to possess this shit, you should be into freedom of information and being able to file share. What if this was a religious thing? What if fucking somebody had a new religion that the government didn't like and you didn't get approval and you wanted to fucking make a book and share it? This is that kind of shit. This is, this is sharing our ideas and the government saying, not without my approval. So I hope you guys share. Please like, subscribe. Uh, any comments, any additions, anything I missed, please, please put it in the comments below. And uh, thank you all for listening. Have a good day. Don't fall too far.